mobile and tablet. They've just been absolutely massive growing year in, year out, and 2012 was absolutely no exception. So we had a chance to speak to Lars Koishi, who's director Mobikyo. He's been in Japan since about 2001, so give or take 11 years, reporting on the mobile industry within Japan and also overseas. Well, it's, it's certainly growing. I think, uh, you know, clearly if you take some of the segments and break them out, then we're seeing a lot more speed on the networks. So operators around the world are building capacity so that people actually have throughput to use these. Uh, devices are obviously becoming more powerful and, and more uh, beautiful. Uh, we, we see, you know, the difference between the early edge of geeks getting tablets versus pretty much grandmothers or using them on the bus kind of thing. So I think uh, tablet space is obviously growing quite quickly. Uh, so having, you know, strong or fast networks or, or really um, beautiful devices, uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's things like platforms. So we, we had LinkedIn and Facebook IPO this year. They've, they've really established themselves as, as decks and a lot of interesting content services coming into that pipeline because at least there is a place now where they can put their product out there. So in that holy trinity of having the speed of a network and having a device that can do interesting things and, and you know, icing on the cake, something inside that's uh, useful. Um, it's it's um, it's it's not some weird thing anymore. It's it's really mainstream. So it's it's great to see, and it's uh, it's going to be most interesting to see now over the next three years or five years how this base as a foundation uh, actually starts to build the house. So uh, it's exciting times. It's a, a, a really well-established in a mature market so if you look at certain uh, products or services that have been commercialized for mm, like five to seven years now already uh, NFC so the tap and go to make payments etc so obviously payments is important but it's all of the things that it enables beyond that uh, or, or uh, television broadcasting to mobile so and under the same business model as television broadcasting to your home TV set in other words maybe the national broadcasters of three or five stations it's free on your TV set at home, it's free on your mobile phone in Japan. Both of those uh, came around 2004, 2005 in Japan and so with that period of time for replacing the devices and uh, people actually beginning to recognize how useful they are, uh, they're, they're pretty much regular part of daily life now. So I think that in other markets there's some baby steps towards this, this sort of thing. Um, it's it's fairly common question that I get like what's what's next so we can look at Japan and see what's going on there and then you know someday we'll see that in Europe or US. Uh, I, I think the the best thing that I could say, which is going to sound maybe a little silly, but as opposed to choosing any one of those content service kind of plays, actually honestly, what you're going to see is more more everything, right? You're going to see uh, more speed, you're going to see you know, more uh, device opportunities or differences, you're going to see certainly a lot more usage because everything is in place now. So whether that's um, music or games, uh, uh, obviously social networking is big with the youth, right? Uh, not, not just the youth. Um, I think that's um, the easiest way to be most accurate. What you're going to see is just a continual growth and more adoption, more revenue, more innovative things happening because it's a virtuous circle of there's a place where we can do interesting things and make money and there's a whole bunch of interesting things in here and uh, I'm, I'm happy to do. So that, that would be the easiest way. What we can learn from Japan is what we've seen already well demonstrated is when everything is in order, then it's just growth. And of course you can bolt things on that's uh, increasingly useful or interesting based on the core, but the reality is there's just a lot more going to happen. It's not just gaming, right? They put, they put social first. Right, so if you think, and well, maybe I'm dating myself, but if you think in the arcade days or even the console game days, right, you know, the top 10 scores they can put in their initial or something like that, right, so they can compete against each other. Uh, I think that it, within that community, obviously, gaming is the, it's the binding uh, glue. There, it's, it's all about some kind of gaming uh, experience, what, you know, if it's just a shooting game or a puzzle game or whatever. But uh, it's, it's really, there's, there's a very strong social component. Right, so I think that um, 
generally speaking, people are people, and so it's just the value proposition that you put in front of them, and, and realistically, they tend to react more or less the same way. Uh, so I think the, um, the offering makes sense to mash something like gaming as, as a core and then put something like social, because everybody's social, uh, into the same um, offering and uh, let, let people, uh, how should we say, interact with that in such a way that it, 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 it naturally becomes viral. Right? Uh, I think that we will see similar take up based on similar environment in other markets. So, and that's really where they're at now is trying to take this, uh, this offering into, into other regions and, and maybe twist it to a degree the way it needs to be for a certain place. But uh, at the core, it's, it's social gaming. Right? So it should be interesting to see. If you look at these companies, whether it's a Google or an Amazon or even an Apple, right, um, maybe the easiest way, if you think about it really simplistically, right, what is the core business? What is it that they're trying to do? Um, and then how are they utilizing, whether it's the network or the hardware, in order to achieve you know, a greater end to, to what they're already doing? So. Somebody like Google, is, as an example, or even Amazon, if you put those two in a similar bucket, they, they have a core business. This is what they do, right? And this is just a, a, another means to meet the ends sort of thing. And they want to have that product in front of people in, in a compelling way and as many hours in a given day as possible. So if you use Google's uh, uh, approach to saying we, we, we need to continuously index, we need to continuously serve ads, we have you know, the search ad uh, attention and all of the things that Google does beyond that, obviously, right? Uh, the same to a degree with, with Amazon, right? We have a product, we have an offering, and if the only way you can get it is on your PC, well, how many hours in a day are you in front of your PC? So if you're in mobile environments and we can get some FaceTime with you, um, then maybe that's going to drive more adoption of what it is that we do, right? So if you were to use them as a comparison against somebody like um, maybe like a Windows or a RIM or something like that, their business, their core business is different. And so the way they approach uh, enabling or encouraging more interactivity, more sales, uh, is going to be somewhat different based on the core of what it is that they do. Um, I, I think all of them are very bright people and, and, and uh, not insignificant resources um, and, and clearly capable to, um, to bring a product to market in a tailored kind of way and then measure as they go along what they might need to twist a bit. Um, at the end of the day, does it uh, resonate with the user, right? Does the consumer actually feel they have some benefit? from these different opportunities. And it could be social gaming or music or, or you know, the ability to do things that Google or, or Amazon would offer you in a mobile environment. It, if there's actually a compelling proposition, it, it, it will be clear. And um, th there's clearly merit to it. Yeah, it's, it's definitely interesting times when you see those kind of players stepping into this space. They, they've done their due diligence, they've invested serious resources, and they put their name on the line. But I think at the end of the day, if you're trying to sell product, you have to be where your customers are. And it doesn't matter what business you're in. So, you know, the ice cream stand on the beach. There's nobody on the beach. You're not going to sell any ice cream here, right? You, you have to have that product in a compelling way at a price point or, or exchange of whatever type in a way that uh, customers actually in, embrace that. And uh, when, when they get that right, then they, they're, they're definitely onto something and they build in that you know, uh, how should we say, continuous improvement sort of direction. Right?